Okay, I'm going to cover four things today. I'm going to cover Magpie, what we're building. I'm going to cover the travel industry, what they, what's been built and what should be built, maybe. I'm going to cover uh, why Bing is a hack. Bing is a hack. And I'm going to talk about Andrew Tate, Stanford University, and Mr. Beast. So number one, Magpie. We're a content management platform. For those that don't know, we manage product content and we distribute that content to resellers like Viator, Get Your Guide. Google things to do, concierges, that sort of thing. We've already released a GP a, a AI tool, a GPT tool. We take your possibly poor product description and we make a great one with a couple of clicks. We change the tone. We add information like keywords and we can do translations. We're delighted with the progress so far. We released this a few weeks ago. We've been testing for about five weeks now. It's live. It's been live for a little while. We love it. Next thing we're working on, though, is reviews. We do have access to reviews. We've got a whole module where you can track your reviews from Google and, and TripAdvisor, that kind of thing. Review response we're building first. So we've, we've got a layer now that we've trained to respond to reviews. So we can look at the review. We can then, based on this layer that we've created and based on the large language from OpenAI, we produce some responses. We'll probably end up with three responses. A human will always look at this. A human will pick the best response, they'll edit that, and they'll submit. So it still needs a human, but the responses are excellent. And we're using the, we're using the um, product information and previous reviews to get those ideal responses. Other thing we're doing with reviews, we're doing sentiment analysis. This has been done for a while with AI, but nothing compares with what can be done today. So we're looking at your previous reviews. We're looking for patterns. We're looking for things that are possibly going wrong, departments that are failing. So we can bring up issues, things for you to look at, things that you can go out there and fix. So a lot of work in the reviews. We've looked a lot at images and video. We're not having success in that space. I don't think the tools are ready. If anyone knows of tools that are ready, we'd love to see them, but we don't see it yet. I don't think it'll be long, but we don't see it yet. And the last thing we're doing is um, FAQs. Doesn't sound that interesting, but because Magpie's got your product content, terms of conditions, cancellation policies, all your reviews, we're generating FAQs for your products, which you need to put on your website. Google loves them, users loves them, your customer service people should have them. They're really important to have, and we can generate them really quickly now. And it's a data layer, it's a company data layer which I'll explain in a minute why that's so important with AI going forwards. So on that note, industry tools, there's a few things been built because chat GPT has got chat in its name. Everyone thought it was a chat, but kind of is a chat, but we've all played with it, but the, the hype is not because of the chat piece. It's because of the model behind it, the large language model, a little bit technical, but the large language model, it's read the internet. I think most people know that. It's read Wikipedia 3.4 times. It's read most books, most blogs. It's read most of the internet. It has no idea what it's read. It learns the internet one word at a time and actually syllables at a time and actually numbers at a time. So it doesn't know where it's been. It can't link back to what it's read. It just knows it's read everything and it doesn't ever forget. This is important. I'll get to that in a second. So now we're building these chatbots. We've already got a thousand chatbots. People already said it was AI, it was. Now these chatbots can do a thousand times the productivity the previous ones could use in things like OpenAI. So you'll see these come everywhere. They're gonna be much better. They're gonna be probably fully automated very soon. But what they do need is this layer of company information. AI or OpenAI has got the world's information that's kind of generic. What it doesn't know is where the bus stops, where my bus stops, or what time we close tomorrow night, how far the bus stops from the bathroom, that kind of thing, because it hasn't been printed anywhere, hasn't been published anywhere. So these data layers are what these chatbots are going to need so they can provide great customer service. So this data layer is important. It's the last thing that the AI model hasn't got. So the, these bots are coming, and that's for email responses, it's for phone responses, and it's for chatbots. Um, itinerary builders, I've seen lots of them. I'm sure you've all seen lots of them. You can make great itineraries with ChatGPT. People love to complain because they did a terrible prompt and it made a mistake. If you get the prompts right, these things are great. It's read the world's information if it's been published. That's most of the travel information that exists. Everyone's got their little secret places. It knows most of these secret places because nothing's that secret, but it has the information. 
it produces great itineraries. What generative AI do, can't do is link back to things like maps. It doesn't remember. It doesn't remember what it's read. It doesn't know really where the Golden Gate Bridge is. It can describe it all day, but it can't point to an ID very easily. Um, it's possible, but it's but it's difficult. So what what we need then is the next round of tools are these layers between the itinerary building and this data, this company data. When we get that, we're going to end up with the travel assistant. That I think is the holy grail. So the travel assistant will sit on your phone. It will have access to the large language model, so the world's information. It will have access to this data layer, which is company information, restaurants and tour companies and museums and that sort of thing, and live data, and it'll put the two together. You'll talk to it. It's everything that we were promised with Alexa and Siri and Google, which, which never happened, not even close, but this will happen now. You'll arrive in a place, you'll go to Paris, and you'll just say into your assistant, I'm in Paris, two days, two kids, want to see the Eiffel Tower, take a boat on the Seine, take a walk to the Arc de Triomphe, have some croissant, don't give me any snails, um, $300 budget per day, done. It will now search the data layer, which is all the company information, all the things to do, the restaurants. It will search its large language piece, which is um, 4 million review, uh, blogs it's read on the Eiffel Tower, and it'll put it all together in a nice itinerary. It'll make bookable uh, bookable products within the itinerary. That's possible now. It's being built. I don't know who's going to build it first. It's really complicated still, but it will be built. It's stuff that was always possible using the sliders on the left side of your OTA, and it would take you half an hour to get to the right answer, then go to the next one. This can be built now with that voice that voice command. So that's happening. We're going to start seeing these. They're going to get smarter and smarter and faster and faster. That's pretty exciting. Um, next, I'm going to talk about being Bing as a hack. Um, it, it just is. So the way these models work, like I said, when it produce when these models produce when they generate content, it generates it from scratch, just like we do when we speak. We just generate words from scratch. We don't go back to databases and come out with chunks of words unless we're doing quotes. We just do it one word at a time. But what Bing does, it takes a prompt, uses its AI model, probably OpenAI, even though they say they've got their own. It then takes that result back, does a Google search or does a Bing search, if that exists. It searches them with that prompt to find the top websites for that prompt. So it's basically finding the top Google results. It's then summarizing those top results and showing you that in a response. So it's what you can get by Googling. It's nice that it's got it in a summary, um, but it's not using that large language model. It's not using the, the big brain that it has of all this information. It's a hack. Funnily enough, that's the hack we need in the travel space, that, that combination of large language model and the data layer on top is what could produce this travel assistant. So it, it is an interesting hack and it might be successful. I, don't, I just don't think it's the way to do a search engine. We'll see if, if Bard, if Google comes out with the same thing with Bard. They both got a problem, especially Google. They make a couple of dollars every day from, this, um, from these ads on the search engine results. They can't just switch that out and try something brand new that they don't know if people even are gonna find good results um, and it's expensive. These searches are really expensive and Google's got bills to pay. We'll see which direction they go. We'll see if people like the new Bing or not. Good thing for Bing is they got nothing to lose. No one knows what Bing is anyway. So if it doesn't work that well, it was kind of what people expected it to do anyway. Last thing, Andrew Tate, Stanford University, Mr. Beast. One's terrible, two are great. Their brand, actually one's terrible, one's medium, one's great. Their, their brands, like it or not, they, they stand for something. Um, Google's now got a problem with all this information that's going to keep getting generated and generated. Google's job is to organize the world's information. They go back to what they've always done, which is page rank, which is brand integrity, and they show people the brands that we want to see. So if, we were, if we're searching for science, we're going to click Stanford University. If we're searching for an awful video, we're going to click Mr. Beast, and we'll go back to those brands we know. So brands are still important as we get more and more content. And I think that's important because we're gonna be overwhelmed with content. And that's the only way Google can sort through, the, sort through the content. That's it for now. I'll make more of these videos as stuff comes up. Thanks for listening.